Hi, and welcome to episode 6 of my Vanilla Ice Sheet series. My name is Icon, and today we're going to build a nice little recreation room. Hopefully fi finish the geothermal power research. Get these poor guys some stools and see what will transpire between that. So, first things happening, the shuttle arrives to pick up the Royal Fox. So, welcome to the series, and uh, if you haven't checked it out already, feel free to check out my channel. You'll find plenty of other RimWorld things there. So, oh no, it's not for the Fox, it's uh, for Tony. And if you find anything you like, leave a subscription. You won't miss any future content, and I'll be a very, very happy man to see that subscription. So, we're going to reap all rewards for this endeavor here. I mean, normally. Just keeping somebody in my colony and feeding him would be not too much of uh, of a deal, but in this circumstance, under these circumstances, these were hot, were hard-earned uh, glitter world meds. I can only say that much. All right. Uh, well, I wish it, it would have been a little bit more. Um, to be quite honest. <laughs> Nevertheless, I'm happy to have some uh, high power medicine because, well, out here we're pretty much uh, not able to trade with anybody. The distances here are r really ridiculous, like three days, three days, five days, <laughs> five a days, not possible to reach. <laughs> so there goes. This is not really a planet where uh, we thrive from from the bustling trade around us. It's okay though. So I can't wait to see that poker table get finished. And also, I need some light in this dreary place. And let us fetch some flooring on this room too, because I feel like if anything, if, if everything outside is uh, so. Um, bad let's make it cozy inside all right so man i wish i could uh, hunt those thrombos but not with that kind of weaponry only and only three people i feel like that would be suicide <laughs> honestly yeah not a good idea i think i really do like this uh combo of a of a workshop stone cutting i should bring up the stone cutting right there like uh let's uh let's do our stone cutting in there why not indoors minus 39 degrees i mean the work temperature would be uh shoddy but whatever fits the theme and i am not that much of a efficiency player especially not on this run where we're just uh Playing on a quite moderate difficulty, Strive to Survive is a really wonderful difficulty to go for some storytelling and a adventurous pace, where progressing is my main objective and I'm not that much concerned about dying and such. Having a lot of fun here, because this biome makes progress in itself always uh, something you've got to work for. And look at that, we got some excellent quality. Um, slate. Let's uh, pick up some slate stools here. <sighs> so I think the only way how to get effectively wood into my colony would be to trade it somehow. That's the difficult question, how to trade it. I mean, there's uh, somebody pointed it out in the comments a while ago. There's uh, only so much fertility available here. So, I don't know stony soil, no. There's nothing here to uh, grow upon. Just need the hydroponics and then I have the problem, no trees possible. So, how to fetch me the wood I need for my royal throne rooms? Or will we have forever undignified throne rooms? I mean, that would be, uh, <laughs> that would be tragic, wouldn't it? So, uh, how to solve this? I mean, I don't have any way of getting wood naturally. I could only get me some mod 
that enables uh, something, some plant which I can forge wood. Tough one. But I think um, the way to go is for me, after geothermal power, I want to strive directly into the micro and electronics and then comms consoles, orbital trade beacons, and then possibly going for some transport pod technology as quick as possible. That would be biofuel beforehand, machining, yeah, why not? It's always good to have machining, it's a very valuable tech. And looks like our guys here are surviving the first winter soon. Hey, go us. Pretty proud of them. And this little place, it's really, it's growing on me, honestly. So, I like it here. So, let's put in some lights. I don't want to have it too gruesome here. Okay, let's, uh... No oh, psychic drone for females. So, yeah, okay. Just uh, checked out the ingredient radius if everything's uh, still in the vicinity. All right, look there, lights. It's getting beautiful, but looks like I, I should be uh, getting a little bit more conservative with the steel someday. I mean, there's no, no endless supply of steel on this map. Well, kind of. Deep deep mining is a thing, you know. But apart from that, somebody pointed out that double walling would be uh, also a option to save some power. I mean, I could double wall the workshop at least. That would be something. Because uh, the workshop is one of those areas in my base where I don't want to put in too much heating. But at the same time, it could be a good thing. And also I want to um, expand my freezer. I think Barbara and Squint have to get some new room one day. And I'm going to remove that wall and expand the freezer because I want to stockpile some food. It's never bad to have some food available. All right. So my researchers have now some furniture to sit on too. Let's uh, give everybody to some place to sit on. And then let's think about the, uh, the poker tables. I think for this endeavor, I'm going to bring my valuable cloth resources. And we're going to bring up some armchairs here. I mean, the armchairs would be uh, very effective on the research tables. I'm well aware, aware about that. So if you want to play it effectively, you would put the armchair in front of the tables, which are having the highest workload on them because your people are getting the mood bonus from comfort while they're sitting or they're getting it from sitting on a comfortable thing for a longer time. And this is uh, especially for researchers a nice thing because uh, they sit just, th their, their whole job is sitting there and doing sciencing, which is basically just glorified sitting. <laughs> so let's uh, get Henry to, to clean the workshop. Somebody has finally to, to, to swipe it out. Come on, it's going to get beautiful here. So, this is a little fortressy thing uh, by now. I didn't uh, aim to build some kind of fortress when I started here, but I can't say that I'm not pleased. All right, so Eden's Arctic Foxes. So, a 81 year old hunter named Eden. So, I don't know. I do like the idea of taking this uh, old woman into this place. It feels like the right thing to do. I mean, normally these these kind of quests are actually ridiculous because, like, come on, you're getting hunted by something harmless. But <clears throat> an 80-year-old woman? All right, come on, let's do it. So, bad back dementia and uh, cataract, cataracts incoming. I'm ready for everything. Bring it, game. So, uh, let's check out the time. 
So she's going to get hunted immediately. So what I'm going to do is uh, check out the food and everybody. And if anybody is not fed, get him fed and uh, let's uh, move our people towards there. So Eden, frail and bad back, huh? I told you. There's a very high chance that the Arctic foxes, which will now come onto the map in an hour, uh, tackle her down. It's going to be a tough one. <laughs> but I knew uh, 80, when I read 81 year old, uh, I knew that. So careful shooter. <laughs> She's even slothful. <laughs> Curses. 1.14 cells per second. Let me tell you something, friends. The Desert Tortoise is having a speed of one cell per second. So, Eden, you're only beating a Tortoise. Barely. Okay, let's have some fun. Um, but, as a matter of fact, um, jokes aside, she's going to be a very good uh, person to have as a scientist, because scientists, they just need to park themselves in front of that desk. And You remember? Glorified sitting. So, uh... <laughs> Oh my goodness, she's moving so slow. So uh, we're going to need a lot of bionics to get that old lady back into into business, but let's try. I just hope that Barbara and Squint are able to uh, <laughs> get there. <laughs> I'm just laughing so hard because usually the distance between the Manhunter pack and the refugee is a little bit high. That's uh, I think that's legit the the slowest person needing refuge in my in my place I've ever had before. Okay. So we had a good laugh. <laughs> Let's try to save Eden. I I'm not sure if I'm able to, to, to do it, but uh considering what uh what would have been the chances she would have been dead if we didn't try it anyway, so there goes uh, Eden. I think, considering everything, turning back and uh, punching them is the smarter choice because normally I'd say run a bit closer towards the rescue. But running. This old lady is uh, everything but running. So let's see. Maybe she's uh, able to tackle something now. So, I'm pretty sure, okay, they're leaving her on the ground, lucky me. That's awesome. So, okay, it's going to be still pretty dangerous because uh, it's uh, two foxes, my melee guy is uh, miles away, the guy down, oh, the lady over there is bleeding to death. It's overall not so much of a nice situation, so let's check it out. 3.82 cells per second on the fox, and Squint is uh, barely quicker, but he's a little bit quicker, actually. So, I'm going to play the kiting game. And uh, what about, about Henry's speed? He's slower than the fox's curses. Curses about that. Okay, Squint got to run. Just uh, hope that Barbara will uh, take a successful shot one day. Yeah, there it goes. That's good. So that one is a goner. Tail's gone. And uh, I'm now going to take a little. Oh gosh, this is uh, there. This is where where it's uh, going bad. I should have. Uh... Now Henry goes for the wounded one. Because uh, the wounded one will be, be dying quicker. There it goes. So, I, I don't think that Squint is able to run in this situation anymore. Oh boy, he's bleeding so hard. I hate foxes for that. But, uh, alright. So, I'm going to retreat now that Henry is available. Come on, come on, come on. Kill it. Alright, so Henry's wounds are hopefully not lethal. Alright, nice. So old lady Eden is uh, getting rescued by Barbara. So there we go. And uh, Squint and Henry are heading home now. I'm okay with Henry uh, treating himself here. Um, I think Squint will be 
should be okay with uh, some herbal meds. Okay, let's see. Maybe we're going to be able to salvage this situation completely. It's looking good, actually. Because uh, Henry is stable now. Squint is still having several hours on his death clock. And uh, chances are high that uh, Henry is done with bandaging Squint once uh, Eden hits home. So... We're having a warm and nice room for the old lady. Oh, I love RimWorld. This is uh, one of the typical uh, RimWorld adventures, which are just uh, so much fun to me. So hypothermia on Eden is getting more serious. So Barbara is carrying the old lady home. Squint is uh, saved too, just like I assumed. Henry is now ready to rescue the next person. He's pretty tired and uh, annoyed with everything, but uh, I think there's still time to save this uh, woman. Because, uh, let's check it out. I don't want to. Or, or is Barbara? Yeah, Barbara can do that. It's okay. It's okay. I think uh, Henry can go to bed and, uh, well, Barbara is not really... Um, in a better position, but uh, I want to train her skills as well. Just hope that I don't burn her out too hard here. Uh, two more to go. Low quality medical skills are just uh, so so brutal. But uh, look at Barbara taking care of Eden completely. Okay, welcome to the crowd. I'm happy that she's with us now honestly honestly might be slow like a uh, like a tortoise but little do I care um, she's the one that uh, gets Henry out of the research bench and looking at Henry's jobs I'm happy that somebody else is taking over the science she might be only having a rank of four right now but uh, she's getting there I'm absolutely certain. All right, so this was quite adventurous, good to say. Out here, every uh, every fight taking place so far away from your colony is really, really uh, scary, because you know you need to be to be at home as soon as possible. Hypothermia happens so quickly, and. Um, And overall, the movement speed is uh, impeded, but with the by the hard snow, like uh, slows people down, range weapon accuracy reduced, fire extinguishing. Well, at least something positive. But uh, okay, let's think for a moment. I need more chunks, so uh, granite chunks are available right here quite easily. There's lots of granite around my base, and, uh, oh well, squint got an infection. So that's why I wanted to have the medicine so desperately. Alright, so squint, you ought to have bad rest now, and... So, I'm going to take one experiment here. Henry is a pretty pro uh, proficient doctor. And uh, if you're having a good doctor, you can sometimes perform infection treatments with a very good roll without medicine at all. And, uh, oh, that was a bad one. So we're going to to our uh, industrial uh, meds next time. So it was worth the roll, because basically if I would have been around 30 or 40%, it, it's tough to roll that, but it's possible. Um, Henry would have not, uh, Squint would have not needed another round of uh, good medicine. But look at that, already, uh, already tackling the immunity race. Hmm, let's watch that. I mean, I have nine more hours until the next treatment is possible, so that's okay. What's uh, dropping for us? The cooking. Hmm. So, uh, Henry, you're not researching anymore, but uh, you're ought to cook now. There's always something. 
I'm still waiting on that uh, plants eight on somebody. I really want to have heal root available. It's uh, will be such a powerful addition to everything here. So no, no chance to finish the research on on geothermal during this episode. <laughs> far away from that. I mean, picking up Eden was uh, a pretty tough thing to do, and uh, yeah. I think if I ever get hands on good prosthetics, if I ever get the ability to install some bionics into her, or even Arquitec, that would change everything. I mean, there is the technology to do that. A bionic spine is not uh, completely uh, impossible to get. Um, before royalty, it was harder, though. Um, before the royalty DLC, it wasn't possible to craft those. So I'm quite happy with this. But until then, well. So uh, Eden is normally moving with... Uh, oh, that's, uh, that's not her normal speed. She's uh, still wounded, and that's why she's moving that slowly. But uh, she's never going to be a fast mover, anyways. But um, her consciousness, otherwise, is uh, mostly okay. And uh, frail doesn't uh, give you pain, and bad back doesn't give you pain. And her consciousness is only getting influenced by pain. So that means, apart from that, those scars. She's uh, not having any uh, reductions in her research speed, so it's cool. It's really cool. She's going to be a good researcher one day. But um, could we... Um, oh, let's check out uh, this one here. So, well, it was worth the, uh, the medicine. It gives me a good feeling. Possibly uh, I could have uh, went through it without any medicine at all, but why take the risk if I have the resources? Um, there's still time to take risks when you're out of resources, and uh, once I run out of resources, I'll have more skill level, even. So. Because more time will have passed. That's uh, even more so a reason to to use the medicine now and uh, don't use the medicine if I really have no other choice all right um, I want some more uh, granite floors in here and I want that room ready for um, inhabitants so How's the power grid? It's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. I, I installed a lot of uh, power generators here, but I felt pretty obliged to, to be quite honest. Because it's way too dangerous to have not enough power here. So let's uh, build another room here. And right away another one there that's uh, the plan all the way along I really like how this little place comes along playing in an icy environment is a very very uh, different gameplay experience compared to all the other biomes we had a short medical emergency when um, his infection hit 80% but the same time the immunity kicked in so I'm leaving squint on the top bed rest priority for a little for a little while longer but uh no it's actually not necessary he's on medium pain so hideous environment oh man gotta do something about that poor guy so yo squint if this uh place is so hideous uh, let's clean it up eh how about that? Um, also, I want to get some furniture. Since stone is the only available material to make furniture out of, 
we're going to be pragmatic here. So, it's not even too small to put a dresser in. <laughs> well, well. I mean, this place is meant to be my prison cell and not to be a long-term um, living room. So, I'm going to put up another table here. And some more slate stools, why not? They're cheap, available, and uh, better than nothing. Let's uh, fetch some more slate chunks, though. It's good to have finally four people in here. Gotta say. Because... Eden might be not the ideal person for the colony, but I have a knack for, uh, for, for picking up colonists which are um, non-ideal, to put it into friendly words. Uh, seriously, I like that. The, uh, the real fun of this game is uh, trying to make your own story out of that, but to, to, me, to me at least. Uh, I don't want to generalize that because uh, it's perfectly fine if you're having fun with something else. That's uh, what sandbox games are all about, in my opinion. To create your own sandbox of fun. And if that is something completely different than my opinion of having fun, so be it. Components. Components are running low. That's a bad thing. It's always a bad thing. But luckily there's uh, a bunch of components over here. So with the uh, Epreme going running or or with the Epreme coming up now, the temperatures should be uh, should be rising a little bit. But uh, if I look up the world tile, I mean I rolled this planet really cold. Um, it's uh, minus 59 degree to minus 30 degree 13 degree i named this planet gelidia and if there is any old school rpg fan out there who played bard's tale 3 knows what i what i was thinking about when i named this planet place like that if you don't know it uh it's a kind of a ice world in a really really old school rpg uh one i really played a lot and loved as a kid loving it until now got a wonderful remake so all right this is uh, some new room yay us I mean this could basically Barbara this could basically be Barbara and squint's new room but let's check I mean I don't really need any freezer so I think in the future what I'm going to do is this little room in here is going to be exclusively for finished meals or meats which uh, meet the uh, the the guaranteed phrase because uh, well I can put everything just uh, somewhere indoors and don't this is something wonderful about this place I mean this uh, indoors freezer is actually completely useless now that I think about it more closely I would basically only need it if in the summer during that minus 13 degree phase um, my storyteller would decide to send a heat wave upon me and then only then I think the temperatures would be actually rising into the positive digits so yeah I'm pretty close to dismantling that thing <laughs> <laughs> but whatever uh, there I mean like I mentioned a while ago um, I'm not that experienced with cold biomes this series is also a a new experience to me which I'm enjoying a lot because the last few times I tried to uh, go in the in this biome I, I died pretty quickly because I put too much of a uh, challenge on my table it's okay though I, I love to die because I have um, brought a big too, uh, a too big challenge on me. It's a good feeling to get humiliated from your from your decisions from time to time For me at least so let's uh, check this out. Henry is uh, Making this place uh, bigger. Oh, no Eden don't pick out on food So I'm going to let her do that though because 
that's what the stockpiles are there for. I don't want to arrest the old lady there because honestly, um, it's going to be fine. We have the stuff and uh, I imagine her as a person which was uh, not experiencing the nicest things before. So let's check out her her life. A firekeeper as a child and a hunter as an adult. So I think she uh, was was with the with the natives here so I think she has led a a life of hardship here but uh her skills are really good gotta be gonna be gonna be thinking about uh giving her some nice weapon too at least some some fancy bow may uh, maybe but uh whatever what really struck my eye here or what struck my mind again much more um, was the fact that this woman is a transhumanist, so she might be slothful and uh, her work speed is uh, not good But she's going to love that bionic spine Awesome, she's going to be happy about that prosthetic even so But 81 years is a pretty pretty heavy age. Look at Barbara playing poker oh, wonderful. What a comfy and nice place this is now so let's check out her, her moodlets. So extremely conf comfortable. She's she's living the good life. And uh, we're going to outro at this point slowly. I'm really, really happy with everything. We're coming along really nicely. I think I'm going to drop down some more armchairs or maybe a billiards table before. I think a uh, billiards table will be just fine. We're going to do it out of steel. And uh, in, in a billiards table, there's always some wood. So this one will be a real treasure for the colony. But let's not make it out of steel. I want something more permanent. Let's make it out of stone. Anyways, I was uh, talking about outros, my friends. Thank you so much for watching if you're still hanging around here. You are awesome for spending so much time with uh, me and my videos. And apart from that, I hope we're going to see each other on the next episode too. Feel free to leave a comment. I always love to hear from you guys. And of course, if you haven't done so, subscribe, please. It means so much to me, you can't imagine. And yeah, have a wonderful time until the next time. And goodbye.